Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Zachary Eller, and I will be providing a mini lecture on bone fracture and bone fracture healing. Learning objectives for this lesson are to describe the components of the skeletal system, describe the functions of the skeletal system, identify at least four different types of bones, be able to describe different extrinsic and intrinsic, intrinsic factors that lead to fracture. Also to describe the main steps to fracture healing. For background, you will want to look at week eight, day one of the 2014 fall semester biomaterials course. It is entitled Acute Inflammation and Wound Healing. The skeletal system is composed of bones, cartilages, joints, and ligaments. Bones have multiple functions in the body to support the frame of the body, protect vital organs, for example, your skull protects your brain, facilitate movement, your muscles attach to the bone to create levers, mineral and growth factor storage, blood cell formation, triglyceride storage, that is fat storage, and hormone production. The skeletal system has two major parts. The axial skeleton, which consists of around 80 bones. These include the regions of the skull, the vertebral column, and the thoracic cage. That's, that's uh, everything that's around your vital organs in your center of mass. The appendicular skeleton are the bones of the upper and lower limbs and the girdles that are attaching limbs to the axial skeleton. So that's your shoulder, shoulder blades, everything that connects your arms to your upper body and as well as your hip bone that connects your legs to the center of your body. The diaphysis is the long tubular part of the middle of the say long bone. The epithesis is the end section of the bones where the bones connect. Between these two sections is the epithelial line and where bone lengthening is uh, started at the epithelial line. The four types of bone are long bone, short bones, flat bones, and irregular bones. Long bones are bones that are longer than they are wide. For example, your limbs and your arms and legs and, sh and your upper arm. Your short bones are the cube-shaped bones, for example, your patella. Flat bones are the thin, flat, and slightly curved bones, for example, your ribs and the bones in your skull. Irregular bones have complicated shapes, such as your vertebrae, or even your hip girdle. Pictured here, we can see the four examples of the four different types of bones. There are two types of fractures that we will be discussing in this lecture, extrinsic and intrinsic. Extrinsic occurs from trauma and forces that happen outside of the body. Intrinsic are fractures that occur from pre-existing condition, but more on that later. Fractures from trauma would be bending fractures, where the fracture occurs on the opposite end of where the force is applied. The force applied to the bone causes a moment in the bone, which causes it to bend and eventually fracture. The fracture starts on the opposite side of the bend, and it can continue until it is completely fractured. Torsional fractures occur when twisting force is applied along the long axis of the bone. Usually this is a result of one bone being placed in a fixed position while the other end of the bone is forced to rotate. The resulting fracture is very nasty and it leaves a long spiral with sharp points and often sharp edges. Compressive forces happen along the long axis of the bone and it is when a smaller section of the middle, the diffusial section, is forced into a larger section or into the larger of the epithesis. The bone substrate is crushed and these compressive forces lead to fracture in the bone. Continuing, shearing fractures are caused by a force transmitting 
along the axis of the bone, and then it is transferred into another bone that lies peripheral to the axis or across the joint of the bone. The force shears off the bony portion that is unable to continue the transmission of the force between the two bones. Indirect violence is not predictable, and it comes generally from an outside force impacting at a weak point in the bone. So for example, if a tree fell on you and broke your bones, that would be a, an example of indirect violence. Intrinsic fractures come from pathological conditions. Like disease can weaken either groups of bone, select bones, or bones in general. Pathological fractures can occur in any bone and take any shape of fracture. Pathological fractures cause all the bones to be more prone to fracture. Fractures are either complete or incomplete. Examples of incomplete fractures are green stick fractures, where break results in a portion of the bone that hangs off and it branches away from the native bone, kind of like a tree branch, hence green stick. Fissure fractures is another incomplete fracture, and it is cracks that occur within the bone tissue. A depression fracture is when fractures may intersect and a section of the bone may depress or proceed into itself or another bone. Pictured here are five examples of complete fractures. Transverse is when it goes straight across on nearly one axis. Oblique fracture is when it is slanted going across two axes. A spiral fracture would be an example of a uh, torsional fracture, which may leave some nasty sharp edges in the bone. Also pictured here are commutated fractures as well as multiple fractures. A commuted fracture is a fracture that results in splinters and broken pieces. Multiple fractures refers to there being more than one fracture in the bone. In bone repair, and within the first hours of the bone repair, torn blood vessels leak blood to the wound site. The blood will clot and form a hematoma. This site is swollen, painful, and inflamed, and this response occurs within hours of the break. Pictured here is the hematoma and the vessels leaking their blood into the site. The next step is the fibrocartilaginous callus. The capillaries are grown through the hematoma as the phagocytic cells clear the debris. The fibroblasts secrete collagen fibers that disband the break and connect the broken ends. Fibroblasts, cartilage, and osteogenic cells begin the reconstruction of bone. This creates a cartilage matrix of repair tissue, and this includes the osteoblasts that form the spongy bone. Pictured here, you can see the wound is starting to heal. The vessels start to grow across, and uh, broken debris is cleared away by the phagocytic cells. Next is the bony callus. When in one week, the new trabeculae appears in the fibrocartilaginous callus, Callus is converted to callus spongy bone, and this takes approximately two months for firm union to form. Pictured here is the bone callus, and it, as you can see, the bone is starting to reform. The bone callus continue. This step is the final step in the bone fracture repair. The bone will remodel, and compact bone is formed around the edges to reconstruct the shaft walls. The final structure forms and it shapes itself in response to the mechanical stretches that are found within the bone. Pictured here is the final step and the longest step. The fracture is healed and as you can see the harder outer bone is also overgrown. Pictured here is the bony callus. The fracture has healed and the bone has remodeled to appropriately have the harder, more mineralized bone tissue on the outside for the wall and the spongy inside for the vessels. Now for a review, the skeletal system is composed of bone, cartilage, joints, and ligaments. 
The function is for support protection movement, mineral and growth factor storage, blood cell formation, fat storage, and hormone production. There are, are there were four types of mentioned bone: long, short, flat, and irregular. Extrinsic uh, fractures were caused by trauma. Intrinsic fractures are a result of a pathological cause. Bone repair happens in four steps. The formation of the hematoma, formation of the fibril cartilaginous callus, formation of the bony callus, and the bone remodeling. Uh, I realize your time is important, so I thank you for taking your time to watch my video. If this was a real class, I would have video questions on Blackboard, but be sure to answer the video questions that I will include on this assignment. It will be featuring a member of the X-Men named Meryl, who can remove bones to use as clubs as well as knives, and she's pictured here in the bottom middle. Thank you for your time.